Hey everybody, welcome back to the series where I go through my Curse of Strahd for Shadow Dark campaign. I give you a recap of kind of what we did in our last session and talk about the prep that I did and, and we'll be doing for the next one. Um, we actually played uh, yesterday, which would be Sunday, uh, instead of on Monday because my players just couldn't organize. Um, we were going to be free tonight and all this stuff. So it works out. Um, it worked out. We were able to play last night. And uh, we played for about three and a half hours and it was almost entirely role playing. So there's not a whole lot to cover in terms of, because it was mostly me giving information and mostly them deciding what to do. There was a lot of player conversation, a lot of like, well, we could do this or we could do that. So there's a lot of just, you know, role playing and, and out of character discussion. Um, it was a pretty chill session. I had made, one of my priorities was to give them a breather. And I think this was that. If anything, I kind of went overboard in terms of how much information and how many allies and how many options they now have. Like they were like, this is too much. We don't know what to do. Um, so I think I probably overdid it. I, I uh, you know, I'll pull back on some of that, and I think they'll be ready moving forward to now know what to do and, and make their plans. But I gave them a whole bunch of options. So I went from being, you know, pretty linear. They kind of have to do this to now just being like, Poof, what do you want to do? Um, so it was good. But they started off with a conversation with Bishop Lucian at the Cathedral of St. Andrew. They talked to him about what he knew and what was going on. Essentially, he'd been having visions of them, and things had been getting worse. He was aware that all this stuff was going on, and he introduced them to several of the factions in the town. So he said, you know, he told them about uh, what was happening with the Count uh, Vargas Velakovich and how he is kind of going a bit crazy. He talked about um, the Order of the Silver Scale, which is this vigilante group, which is kind of forming and has started to hunt down some of these dark things and is fighting against the dark things in town. He talked about the... Uh, the Blue Water Inn and how there was a uh, minstrel there who seemed to know a lot about the history of, um, of Barovia. Maybe he could get, get information there. He talked about the abbot of St. Markovia who sent him a message saying that he needed him to send the book as soon as he got it. And uh, the, uh, the players were like, oh, okay, so the, the abbot is somebody who might know more because he seems to know what's going on a little bit. And the, the bishop vouched for him and said he's the holiest man he's ever met. He's the wisest man he's ever met. He's you know, all this stuff. He talked about the political opponents to uh, the, the Count, uh, which is, he, he dropped hints about Lady Fiona Vachter, who was interested in, in fighting against him or in, in opposing him, and he could maybe give them an introduction there. So it was just a whole bunch of information the players didn't know exactly what to do. Um, they split up. They immediately split up and went in different directions. Uh, a couple of them went to the, the Blackwater Inn, which is it's Blue Water Inn and the Blackwater Tavern, which are the two places, uh, two bars, essentially, that are that are here in Velaki. Um, and they went to the Blackwater, and uh, Pavel, the, the woodcutter, kind of fell in with a uh, set of, of wolf hunters who are hunting werewolves, and he asked if he could get his weapon silvered, and they said, yeah, you have to have a, a license, essentially, to hunt. We won't do anything illegally here, but if you do get that, you can come with us and hunt werewolves. And, uh, and so he's, um, he's been, uh, he's considering that because he wants to get a silvered axe and then uh, a silvered axe. And then the others, um, uh, Varya went and talked to the representative of the Order of the Silver Scale, um, Sister Blanca, and the, she basically was this very harsh person and, and very clearly zealous and very clearly, you know, like inflexible, but also, uh, a wealth of resources and a wealth of you know, manpower, and uh, so the players are like, okay, well, we can't. Def there's a uh, you know a group of people here that we could ally ourselves with. We have to be careful about. And they learned a lot of stuff. They traded information about vampires and what they knew about them and about the undead and all this stuff. And then um, Ulysses went to the Blue Water Inn and he fell in with Erwin Martikov and Rictavio. Um, and uh, Rictavio the Wondrous, who I am not making. Uh, in fact, it was really funny. I'll talk about that in a minute. But he went there and he basically found out about the Were Ravens and that they had been watching him this whole time and um, and that they know that he's good and they're here to help. And basically, he got connections there. And so now they, they that was where we basically just left off was the different players kind of doing their own thing. And then um, they're going to come back and discuss what to do next. So probably the next session will be another session of not a lot happening. They might uh, get some resources, decide who to side with, and then maybe go uh, one of the paths because they had basically quests leading them in different directions or, or adventures to go in different directions. The Order of the Scale talked about... Um, now, I, I had the Order of the Silver Scale... Um, uh, I had uh, Argen Volstholt be up here, up in the Silver Valley. This is marked Argen Volstholt. It makes sense. Silver Valley, Valley of the Silver Thread, the Silver Creek. It's all Argon, right? It's all the Silver silver Scale. It makes sense. So I said that they had a... They, they said that there is a... 
a relic there called the Sun Sword. It's a, it has a blade of pure sunlight. And we were told that our founder, that when things grew darkest, he would return and, and bring us this artifact. So we, we've gone to find it, but our soldiers haven't returned. And so if you could go there and bring it back for us, then we would know you're on our side and we could all work together. And, and we'd have this mighty artifact in this battle against darkness. So they have the Sun Sword up at Argon That's what they've been told. Then they were also told that the Abbey of St. Markovia, um, the abbot there wants the book and that he's a wise man who knows what's going on, so they could go there. Then also southwest of Kresik, they were told that um, Esmeralda, this was the connection with Rictavio, Rictavio and Esmeralda are kind of partners, and Rictavio said, uh, you know, my my partner, this this great wondrous uh, monster hunter, uh, she's a Vistani, she knows the region, she's, she grew up here, but she's a great uh, fighter, of uh, you know, destroyer of beasts and monsters and things like that. She it was out in Kresik, uh, researching the witches which are rising in the western wood and she ran off into the southwest and, and ran off into the woods and we haven't seen her since. So um, we don't know what happened to her. We need to find out what happened to her. She's a great ally. She should be a great help because they were like, well, we need allies. We need resources and supplies. So they have, they can go to the southwest of Kresik. They can go up to the Abbey of St. Markovia. They could go up to the uh, Argon Vostolt. They were told that they could also um, stay in Velaki and try to uh, meet with um, Lady Fiona Vachter and uh, perhaps undermine the count that way. So they know that there are at least several things that they could do. Those four different directions. Stay in Velaki, go up to Argon Vostolt, go to the Abbey of St. Markovia, or go to uh, Kresik and uh, try to find what happened to Esmeralda uh, and the witches, which is going to lead to Yester Hill and the uh, Bobby La Saga. So I have, I have things going in different directions, essentially. Uh, I have the next, depending on what they do and where they go, I have another sort of adventure site. So I'm going to make the Abbey has been totally corrupted. Um, it's going to be uh, you know, a dungeon. They're going to have to actually fight their way in and deal with things. I, it might start off with them going there peacefully, but they won't be allowed to stay there for the night, so they'll go down to the village below the town, and then they'll go back. It'll just be like a big thing, you know. Um, and then the people of Kresik, I think there's going to be like witch burnings in Kresik, and they're going to be like, you know, Inquisition style, like, you know, Salem witch trials going on with, you know, pyres and uh, people with pilgrim mats, you know, <laughs> not like the full on thing. But I think that's what I'm going to make Kresik. So they're going to come through Kresik and it will be like this really hardcore, you know, witch burning place. Um, go up to Markovia where the, they'll find out what's going on there. And then they're, you know, they'll have, if they choose to go down into the uh, Yester Hill stuff with the Wizard of Wines, that, that'll be, you know, they'll, I'll do all that. Um, so they really have lots of options. Um, but that was basically all that happened in that session. It was the party talking about what they were going to do next and meeting with all of these various people and, uh, and uh, gathering information. It was a little slow for my tastes. Um, I, I preferred a little more action, but I knew that this was going to be kind of a more relaxed, catch our breath, figure out what's going on. Um, but it was a really, like, town session. They didn't even really buy anything, but they did, like, you know, the gambling in the tavern and wasting time. One of the guys was cheating and, like, trying to cheat at dice. and You know, it was just, like, standard D&D um, &D stuff. And uh, it didn't really fit the tone so much. But I did want to lighten off uh, this, um, this sort of heavier tone that's been going on, at least for a session before it gets back into being really heavy. And I think we might have another session of this, but we're not going to play this week probably, and we probably won't play the next week. So it'll probably be three weeks before we play again because of Thanksgiving and just people's schedules and stuff. So I, that's really all that this video is about in terms of what happened last session. It was definitely, it wasn't super exciting. It was fun and it was solid and it was just a big role-playing, you know, uh, information session. But I wanted to cover here um, what I have in terms of prep. So uh, I think I might just do that now. Basically, I spent a while going through making this document. This is the Lockheed Factions and NPCs. And so I broke it down by the different... Um, locations or, I don't know, you might say faction titles. So there's the cathedral and the people who are associated with that. There's the Keepers of the Feather, so the Erwin Modikov, and, and there's the Order of the Silver Scale. There's the Locky, basically the town itself. There's the Cult, and then there is the Townsfolk, and then the Vistani. And I use the color-coordinated thing so that and it doesn't make a lot of sense, but blue is allies, people who are firmly on the side of good. Uh, purple are people who are neutral or, or are, you know could go one way or the other. And then red is someone who is opposed to the players, at least for now, right? I mean, these could change, but this is just the, the things that I use to, to get a sense. So I essentially put the uh, NPCs that are associated with that faction, and then I used gold 
to a um, list of locations that are associated with that faction, or just the location, use gold as a, an indicator of location. And then green was like an object, or like something that they could find or something important there. So, um, and I just broke it down. So I have the, the, the faction, the NPCs and details about them, including their um, stat block that I'm using for them. Um, then I have a brief description of the place and the people and what's going on there. And I just did that for each of them. So for the Cathedral of St. Angel, I have Bishop Lucian, Brother Julish, who's the one that they met the first time, Sister Poliana, who runs the orphanage, and she's uh, one of those people that's you know kind of more neutral, could go either way. She's strict and short-tempered, uh, and she has her own thing going on, but she's not uh, evil. And there's Milivaj, who is the uh, unwilling servant, the, uh, the oldest orphan in the orphanage, and he's the one who is going to steal, or he wants to, he's been tasked with stealing the relics. Um, and then there is... Uh, there is uh, the, the, the uh, Felix, Odna, and Mitya, who are the three uh, orphans that, if they go to the orphanage and meet them, that they could run into. Uh, Mitya loves Blinsky's toys. That might be a connection to Blinsky. Odna is friends with Arabella, or Arbel, who is the, uh, the Vistani girl, and so that might be a connection to the Vistani. And then Felix is cursed, and he, so that would might connect the witches. So I just created things like that. And I'm having it so that the, uh, the hags are stealing the children's dreams, which makes them a fearful and open to manipulation, and that will help them, like gain access to the town. It's kind of what I'm doing. Um, then I have the Keepers of the Feather, which is Erwin Mardikov, Danica, and then Brahm and Brea, the twin children. Um, and, you know, the Blue Water Inn and what they're up to um, and what they know. Uh, and then there's the Order of the Silver Scale. So I have Otto Torovich, Blank, uh, Pils Pilskaya, and Verber Volinsky. Those are the three, uh, you know, if, the three main NPCs related to that faction. Um, and the Lion's Mane Apothecary, which is where they have their secret uh, meeting house, and uh, what they're doing, and what they want, and uh, what they're trying to deal with at the moment. And they have Velaki, so Count Vargas Velakovich, Izek Strazny, and Countess Lydia Petropta. Now, I changed Izek from the book. Instead of being this, you know, cursed dude with his creepy arm, I just made him, like, a really feverishly loyal servant of Vargas, but also that he's in love with Stella Wachter, because I changed the whole thing with Irina and her backstory, so it doesn't make so much sense anymore to keep it the same way. So I made Isaac, or Isaac, um, in love with Stella, which is interesting now because she's in her coma, but he, she's been promised to Victor, but that's his father, or his, his, his master, the, the guy he's really loyal to, it's his son, and so he's, the, he's conflicted in th about that aspect of his loyalty, so it's a cognitive dissonance, and that could be exploited, um, depending on if they find out, of course, that, you know, the, that uh, Victor has uh, been responsible, or has partly been responsible for her, for her state. And then, of course, Countess Lydia Petrovna, who's just oblivious and out of it. And I made her the sister of uh, Bishop Lucian, so there's connected there. Um, then I have the cult. I have Victor Vargovich, which is uh, Velakovich, which is the son of the, the Count. I made him a sorcerer. He's an apprentice to Fiona. He's a necromancer in his own right. Um, Fiona's convinced him that this is happening in his, uh, in his time with her. Um, she's probably kind of in love with him or, or maybe thinks he's... I don't know what's going on there, but Fiona's kind of creepy there, uh, I think, with Victor. He was, of course, um, um, engaged to, to, to Stella. And then there's Fiona herself, who wants to bring her husband back. Um, that's probably her main motivation, I think, is that she's trying to serve Rahadin and therefore the devil in order to bring the, uh, her husband back. Um, then there's Yeska, who is just, you know, a peasant who's been terrified. And then there's the Ernst, Ernst Larnack, who is a wolf hunter. He's the one that they actually made contact with in the Blackwater Tavern. So they have kind of a sort of friend but it turns out that he's actually a spy for Lady, uh, Lady Wachter. And actually, they were warned about that, or rather Ulysses was warned about that by, by Irwin. He said he doesn't trust the Wachters. He thinks they might be involved with the cult. So then there's Sophie Byrne, Vasily von Holtz, Oleg Drazkoy, who are all noble people who are involved with the cult. They're members of the book club, essentially. And Sophie is an outsider. She's from the colonies. And so if they run into her, she'll be this, you know, southern drawl, because that's what the other two are doing the two characters who are the two players who are playing uh, characters from the colonies use kind of a southern accent and so she'll be like that and so it could be kind of a friendly uh, you know if they happen to run into her it'd be kind of an interesting NPC to, to, to run but she's you know, sadistic and evil but she's friendly and beautiful and and, uh, and an outsider like they are so that might be like a, a connection even though not really and then I have her two sons uh, Nikolai and Carl neither of them know what's going on one of them is would be inclined to do so the other one is a bully and not clever, but he is probably actually ultimately not okay with the cult. So I kind of, again, try to make them interesting NPCs. I don't know how they'll come up or, or what, but if they do happen to come up, 
you're not going to use him that way. And then Henrik the Coffin Maker slash Undertaker. He is, um, he is a firm member of the cult. He's creepy and uh, uh, supremely selfish and uh, manipulative and clever. So he's involved with that. And at the Walker House and the Coffin Maker Shop are the two main places, and they're trying to steal the bones from the cathedral. Uh, and they're trying to destroy the Order of the Silver Scale, but they don't know where they are yet or, or what they're all totally involved with. Um, and Lady Fiona is trying to have Vargas be overthrown. Either, she says, either, you know, she wants to try to cause an uprising that she's not involved with. Because either that will mean that he is brutal and puts it down and leaves chaos and all that, which is great. Or he'll be overthrown and then she can step in and be like, well, I, I guess I'll take over because, you know, she's powerful and influential and connected and that's great for her. So she wins either way if the people um, rebel or if there's, a, if there's trouble in the city. And then there's the townsfolk. So I have Blinsky and I made Blinsky Van Richten in disguise. So he's got these, you know, like... He's got magic that makes him look, look very different. Because the players <laughs> have played this before. And so when I mentioned Rictavio the Wondrous, they were all like, oh, yeah. And so actually one of the players, the cleric, Ulysses, he used like Zone of Truth and was like, who are you really to Rictavio? And Rictavio's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bard, you know. And, also, and so it was funny because they were like, oh, okay, I guess you changed that. But maybe I guess there's no, there's no Van Richten in this campaign or something like that. <laughs> there is, it's just it's Blinsky. Uh, because I don't know what Blinsky's really for otherwise in this game and the way that I've done it. And I thought that would be kind of fun. So real Blinsky has left and for years now. And uh, Van Richten has um, returned. Uh, and they might hear about that. Blinsky, yeah, this guy Blinsky, he used to live here years ago. He, he came back recently and took up his old shop and, and opened up his old toy store. And they might be able to find Van Richten. Um... And then there's Frilsha, who is a childhood friend of Irina's. Um, that could be a connection. She is connected to the Abbey, and so if they want to leave her, Irina, with Frilsha, they could. Especially if Frilsha then takes her to the Abbey. That could be a great dramatic moment. There's Bluto the Fisherman, who witnessed the cult steal, kidnapping someone and killing them, and so now he's he's terrified of it, and he drinks to forget, and he's probably going to go and do his whole uh, offering of Astani child to them, you know, to try to drown her or whatever. He'll probably do that. I don't know if he will, but... Then there's Jenny Greenteeth, uh, the hag's daughter. They, they heard about her, and they know that she might be able to help them with potions or with, with tinctures or something like that, so they might go talk to her. There's Rictavio, of course, and then there's Stella, who is an acolyte, and she's the daughter of Fiona, regular at the cathedral. Um, she's been offered as a, a bride of Strahd. Um, and then I just have where they are. And then I have the Vistani, and they're the ones that are least developed because the players showed no interest in, in engaging with them at, uh, at Velaki. I mentioned that there was a camp there, uh, but the, and that they were slightly different, and they were kind of more sedentary. They lived there all year. And the players were like, huh, but that's it. They didn't have any interest. So there was Aragal, who is the leader of the Vistani. Um, there's Luvash, who comes there from time to time. There's Arabel, Casimir, who I don't know anything about Casimir yet. Uh, I know that he's this um, scarred figure and all this stuff. And then I have Granda and Mishi. That's it. And then I had What the Bishop Knows, and this is kind of his own, like, you know, just like that way I knew I had a, I had a, a baseline for my, uh, for my conversation with them. So I wrote down what he knew. That way I could review it as I was talking and not say something that he wouldn't know or, you know, go there. So I did this, and then I did NPC art. And I just got, came up with NPC art for every character in Barovia that I, had, that I have on this list. So I have Master Victor, Milovage, Mishi, you know, Casimir, Lady Fiona Vokter, Felix, uh, Brahm, Bluto, Blinsky, uh, Jeska, uh, Watcher Otto, Rudolf Van Richten, if they were to get through his disguise, uh, Stella, Sister. I didn't know where they were going to go, so I just grabbed art for every character that I had come up with. And that took me like an hour and a half to get all my notes straight, my ideas straight, who was who, what they wanted. Um, so I prepped that over the course of uh, the early afternoon, and then uh, we had our game. And that's how it went. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. I think they're probably going to go from Balaki to... Um, I think what they indicated was that they were going to gather. They were going to ask Erwin to start organizing things. They were going to ask the Order of the Silver Scale to start organizing things. They were going to try to get what supplies they could and then take the book over to Kresik and then up to the Abbey of St. Markovia. And then because they would be in the area, they would then go and look for Esmeralda. And I think that's what they said, because they're like, well, of all of the potential allies, um, the Mardikovs seem the friendliest and the solidest, especially since we now know that they're were-ravens, that they've been watching us, and that they, they like us. We should help them. So they're like, yeah, we should help the, the Mardikovs. We should help Erwin and uh, Rictavio, uh, and we should try to find Esmeralda for them. So they're like, okay, so we'll look for Esmeralda. We will go up to Kresik in the Abbey of St. Markovia. Um, and, uh, and that'll pretty much, that'll be it. I think that's what they'll do. They're going to stop and talk to Jenny on the way out of town. I think that's what they said they were going to do. But, 
you know, who knows? They may, they may decide differently over the course of the weeks between now and when we play again. Anyway, uh, it's a shorter one today. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update on how the campaign went and the prep that I did for it. Um, it was fun. Uh, not very action-packed, but it was fun, and I hope that we'll play again soon, but it'll probably be a couple weeks. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, I'll talk to you all later.